Hey guys, I'm Dan, this is Create Minis, and today I'm painting up my favorite commander, Iden Versio from Battlefront 2. Iden Versio is a unique commander for Star Wars Legion, and today we're going to paint her using primarily three colors. Begin by moving both her and her counterpart from the sprues. Iden is available to be built in three separate poses, with her guns the repeater, the repeater, and the repeater, because let's be honest, you want the repeater. After the models have been removed from the sprues, take an X-Acto knife and remove any of the extra edges or marks from where the sprue was attached. Be careful when doing ID-10 as his legs are very fragile and you don't want to break them. Once the models are cleaned, it's time to assemble them. Now on these hard plastic models, you can use both super glue or plastic glue. On this, I use Tamiya's Extra Thin Cement. When assembling ID-10, be sure that the big lens faces the front, which is the shorter legs on the model. This can easily be turned around backwards. Clean Iden. She has marks on her boots and wherever the sprue is attached, particularly where the body fits up. After that, assemble the same way. For the head, I've chosen the model with the breathing apparatus attached. It adds approximately 10 points of cool and plus one awesome to the model. Now attach the arms. For the repeater, I take the short arm first and nest it into its socket. Slowly rotate it back and forth until you feel it nest in where it needs to be. If you're building Iden with a different configuration, you're doing it incorrectly because you're not using the repeater. Now attach the forearm and gun and line it up appropriately, ensuring that there isn't any gap when pressed together. For ease of painting, I'll take the second arm and dry fit it to make sure that it locks in appropriately, but I will leave it loose so that way I can still access the chest and the back of the gun as needed. To prep the model for primer, I take a little blue tack and attach the helmet to a toothpick, that way I have something to hold it. For the body, I do my usual technique of a tiny dot of super glue and attach it to an old base or cork that I have laying around. After I've prepped the models for priming, I also get the bases ready. If you'd like to do bases like I do them, check out the link I've included above. It'll show you an easy way to make really cool looking bases. Break off the end of a toothpick and put ID10 on and we're ready to prime. For this, I use Rust-Oleum's Ultra Cover Primer in matte black. It's my favorite primer to prime with, and I found it paints a lot easier and has better coverage than any of the local hobby primers that I've tried. Plus for any of my black Imperial units, I love the way the matte effect looks. Now what I'll do is take Vallejo's German Grey and highlight up all of the raised areas on the model. From the armor, to the pants, to everything in between, we're using the same color to highlight all of it. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
This can be a lengthy process, but I assure you, if you take your time and catch all of the folds in the fabric, it'll give you a great look when you're done. While I continue to highlight the model, now is a perfect time for you to subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button, or leave a comment below and let me know what other models you want to see painted in the future. After you've done all of the fabric, take all of the hard corners on the model and do the same, highlighting each edge with German Grey. Now continue the same technique on all of the raised bits on the gun. In order to break up the monotone color of the model, I've added a splash of color to the stock on the gun. For this, I chose Olive Shadow. It's a paint from Master Series Paint that I happen to acquire for free, so that's why I chose this color. Otherwise, any sort of lighter olive green type hue really accents this model nicely. You can see against the all black model, it really stands out and makes the gun pop. Now with the gun fully painted and the edge highlighting done, I can glue in the other arm. I use super glue here because the plastic glue eats away the paint and is much harder to work with. Now it's time to edge highlight the helmet. Using the German Grey, do the same techniques. Don't forget to show a little love to the rounded areas on the helmet as well. Throw a highlight on the raised edges where the sun would be hitting it from the top. And after doing so, run that color down the hoses as if the sun were gleaning off of the top of every little ridge. Catch the sharp edges along the back and the top and then it's time to paint some color. For the stripes and lenses on the helmet, we're going to be using red. 
Now for this I've seen a few different ways to paint it. If you're painting an Imperial Special Forces or an Inferno Squad, you can throw these stripes on both sides of the helmet. Iden, I've seen with one stripe, and I think it looks a little bit cooler having that offset color on one side of the model, so I'm only going to paint half the helmet. Once your striping is done, tighten up your edges and frame them in with black. This is also a perfect time to clean up some of your edge highlights if you got a little reckless like I did. Tighten them up and make them thinner. Now we're going to paint the lenses. Take the tip of your brush and stick it into the corner of the lens and work the paint outward into the wider area. Get it as far as you can without touching the edges of the frame as much as possible. Then, spin the model around and stick your brush into the corners to try and flush out the rest of the paint. Thinning your paint here will help tremendously. Making it too thin though will cause it to wash out and run over the edges, so it's a fine line that takes a little bit of practice. When you're done, clean up any of the overspill with your highlight color. Now I take a crimson shade and wash over the top of the lenses. This gives them a little bit glossier look against the matte helmet and also tints them a little bit darker red. As you can see the glossy look gives them a natural highlight from the lighting in the room. Now we're going to take some blue, red, and white and paint in all the little lights and buttons on her breathing apparatus. Make sure there's not a huge amount of paint on your brush and lightly brush over the raised areas until you get coverage. Less is more here. If you have a ton on your brush or it's super thin, it's just going to wash out and fill the little crevices in between the buttons. Paint the center switch white and then frame in the outer switches with a lighter gray such as sky gray.
Then as a final touch, don't forget the tiny buttons on the top and bottom. Glue the head on and Aiden is ready for battle. Now, you can optionally paint stripes down the side of her legs and arms as well. I chose not to, as I've never really gotten a super clean look. What I did do though, was go back and add the red to the shoulder pad that I forgot. For this, use the same technique as the buttons. Make sure you have enough paint on your brush to get it onto the model, but not too much or too thin of paint where it fills in the crevices. Lightly brush over the raised areas and you'll get a nice clean look. When you finish that up, go back with black and frame in the edges for a nice sharp detail. Now, we're going to use the same techniques and colors on ID10. Take red and fill in the big lens on the front. Then, color any of the small dots on the tops and sides of ID10 to your liking, however many lights you'd like on him. Once finished with the base red, mix in just a tiny bit of white, not too much that it's pink, but lighten it up a little bit, and paint three quarters of the lens on the top half. Then, mix in just a little bit more white, and paint even further up, following with just a small dab of white on the upper crescent of the lens. This is going to build up a nice highlighting effect and make it look as though it is an actual lens when we cover it with a little bit of crimson shade at the end. Now, take your German Grey and highlight all of the edges on ID10. Don't forget the round edges on top. Lastly, after he's dried, take your crimson shade and wash over the big lens. A few coats will darken it up and add a glossy effect. Attach them to your bases, apply a coat of clear, and you're done. Aiden and her counterpart are ready for battle. So now you're ready to have Aiden lead your Imperial Army to yet another victory. If you like what you saw, leave a comment, hit the like button, subscribe for more content just like this. I have a Patreon if you want to help out the channel, otherwise just spread the word, let your friends know about it. If you liked some of these and you want to see some unit in particular that you need help painting, drop me a comment or shoot me an email, createminis at gmail.com. No matter what, thank you for supporting the channel and until next time, keep creating.